area, welcome to Talk Back, representing your issues, your voices, your words, and your concerns, looking at local art and politics in your neighborhood. And here's your hosts, Anthony and Michelle. We want to welcome you all to Talk Back. This is a brand new talk show for the Bay Area. Yes. We're going to focus on art, politics, culture, entertainment, sports, life, everything, Woo. but how it pertains to you and everyone else that lives in this unique place we call the East Bay. I'm Anthony. And I am Michelle. Yes, Anthony, thank you. Brand new show, Talk Back. The show is a little different than some of the other shows you'll be seeing out there. Not your average garden variety show. Most importantly, we've got some great special guests, local guests. We've got some reports, street beat, let you know what's out there, some feedback, voices from some locals, and we want mostly involvement from you. So please give us a call. Check out our website, www.talkbackcentral.com. And let us know how we're doing. Give us some ideas, some feedback. We would love to hear from you and see what you think. Now, today's topic is Cantonese opera. Do you know anything about it? I know I don't. I don't, I don't know too much about Cantonese opera. Luckily, though, for you and for me, we will be having some great guests. We've got a local performer who is young. Let me tell you, young, but very charming. We also have somebody else who is a leader in educating the local youth on San Francisco performing arts and specifically at the San Francisco Performing Arts Library and Museum. As well, we will have our lovely lady, Charity Twos, who is on the street giving us some voices and feedback on our Vox Pops. But first, we have a feature on Cantonese opera. Maybe you'll learn something. I know I'm gonna pay attention. Check this out. Yes. Cantonese opera is a highly respected traditional art form combining singing, music, acting, and acrobatics into a unique experience. It tells stories about Chinese history, culture, traditions, and philosophies, and represents the culmination and distillation of more than 2,000 years of Chinese civilization. Cantonese opera served as a close tie to the Chinese immigrants in America and their culture by retelling familiar stories from history, popular literature, and religion in their mother tongue, and eased the lonely immigrants' nostalgia. Although Chinese immigration to the Bay Area has continued for more than a century, the Cantonese opera has seen a decline in interest. It is certainly sobering to see a traditional art form once vibrant in past centuries, struggling to find a place in today's popular culture. Perhaps we need a Cantonese opera revolution to preserve the ancient art from vanishing and have it reflourishing in the Bay Area. <laughs> So 这个粤曲啊,粤剧啊,不知完全不知,所以我真的连一首曲我都没有带来的,这一首粤曲我都没有带来,我想着西方的国家是没有东方这些这样的文艺的色彩的,自从有卡拉OK之后呢,的确我们
I was first exposed to the Cantonese opera when I was in back in Hong Kong, uh, where my grandmother is also all, always taking me to watch uh, the Cantonese um, opera show, you know, uh, on, during Chinese New Year celebration. And after I immigrated to the United States, I have not really get into this uh, art until uh, about six or seven years ago that uh, one of my friends that get me into Red Bean Opera House, the where I first know uh, uh, Master Sifu Leongqing Sifu, uh, and I kind of, you know, getting myself into this uh, uh, art, and that's where I start my first performance uh, with the Red Bean Opera House. I'm from Hong Kong. I've been in the United States almost 30 years. When I'm a little kid, about three, four years old, and any time when my mom would my, my dad to go to theater to look at the, to see the show, always bring me go there. So in my mind, I love it. I really love it, Cantonese opera. <laughs> Whenever you make up a, a skit program or a long play program, the background, the, the beautiful costume, and the makeup is very special. Uh, that is uh, a very attracting, you know, audience to come up because of the, the beauty look of the, the the whole show, and the acting, uh, which is a face expression, the uh, the singing, the coordination with the scripts and the lines, and also the movement had to be all coordinated very very hard to to be coordinating with the with ten, over 10 musicians we're talking about so it's a live band music at the same time we're doing the the, the live uh, acting and movement and singing at the same time when I, whenever i tell my friends i'm in cantonese opera they're always confused they're not really sure what it is even a lot of the, like my friends that are chinese that were born here they're not really sure what it is they i they they they've heard of it like um, the grandparents listen to it all the time and it's like irritating or something. It's loud, the gongs, and that, that's the first impression they get. I know that most people my age and think they're very, very much into pop culture and very much into hip hop or, you know, clubbing. And it's not that I don't like that, but I kind of think of Cantonese opera as a way for me to express myself. And I think that it's a way for me to grow as a person, and as an artist. And my friends think it's cool. They've actually come to see my shows before. Since all the scripts are in Chinese and they're on Cantonese, everything's written in, a lot of the scripts are even handwritten, and I, I can't read any Chinese. My mom has to physically read each word, and I have to write it down in English, like phonetically write it down. And that, like, that's the first step. I have to write it all down, just the sounds, what it sounds like and then she'll go back and tell me what the meaning is and then that's still not enough because I'm still not going to remember and then after that she'll have to nitpick the tones and everything because of Cantonese opera we've become closer <laughs> It's a give and take thing. We both learn a lot from each other. You take Western opera, and that's not sung in English. And still, you know, people in America, people in England, and all over Europe love it and really respect it as an art form. And, and so I just think that Cantonese opera can go so far. And I would just love to be able to 
if not myself, but to be able to see other performers perform in front of a wide you know, mainstream audience. And that's one of my goals as um, you know, an, a performer in this art form. Welcome back to Talk Back. Now you just saw a feature on Cantonese opera. I really like the part where Eric Lee was talking about his mom translating the, uh, everything for him so that he could perform on stage. Yeah, I think there's somebody here on our stage that might be able to relate to that. Tyler, you are our special guest today. You are a local performer, very young, very young man. How young are you? How old are you now? Nine. Nine, nine years, years old. old. I would love to be nine years old. What was I doing at nine? Uh, not this. Not you are that. very impressive. I, obviously, I did a little research on you. And Cantonese opera, I look at you and I think, I don't know if I think Cantonese opera right off the bat. How did you get involved with Cantonese opera? Well, it's not really as easy as it looks because if you're at school and stuff, you got to practice. You got to uh, give up a lot of recess even though you really don't want to. Recess. So you must have a, a real deep passion, commitment to performing, because there are a lot of performers out there, but you are performing in a different language. I mean, what's that like? Mm. Well... I mean, right off the bat, I'm thinking it's hard, really hard. <laughs> a lot of young people don't even know a different language. Well, just put your heart into it. That's all I can say. That is some uh, awesome, great advice. I was playing dodgeball at nine. I don't know about everyone else. <laughs> well, Brad, our other guest, Brad Rosenstein, let me just Brad. introduce you Thank here. You. Mm -hmm. Brad is the Director of Programs and Education at the San Francisco Performing Arts Library and Museum. You did it. Yes, wow. it's a mouthful, but Good. tell us a little bit about the uh, Library and Museum in San Francisco. It's on Van Ness, and where is it It's exactly? right at Van Ness and McAllister. It's in the Ness Veterans McAllister. Building. It's actually right up where uh, SF MoMA used to be. Up on the fourth oh, okay, floor, yeah, above I know the exactly Theater. where that is. And uh, it's actually the library's been around a long time. It's actually uh, close to sixty years old now. And it's we preserve and celebrate the history of the live performing arts. Uh, and we have a big focus, of course, on San Francisco and work that's been done out that. here. But it. it's it's international in scope, so right. you could learn about every kind of theater in every part of the world that's being done. And Chinese opera is a huge interest for us because we actually have a very large collection. Uh, related to Chinese opera, especially photographs going all the way back to the beginning. It's been performed continuously in San Francisco since 1852. It's one of the My longest gosh. surviving, I know, one of the art forms uh, wow. that's been done. And it's been major. It's actually, in some ways, it's better preserved in San Francisco than it is in China because during the Cultural that's Revolution, so much of that history was deliberately destroyed. It was outlawed wow. to perform Chinese opera. That's a wonderful piece of history. I think a lot of people would not know otherwise. No exactly. Idea, yeah. And so it's, it's played a huge role in the city, in the, in the developing cultural life of the city. And you guys now have many different exhibits. This is one of the exhibits right now, which is featuring right. Cantonese opera. Tell exactly. us, how long is that going to be running for? When it's up, it's, uh, we just opened a few weeks ago. We had a wonderful opening celebration that Tyler was one of the featured uh, performers at. It gave a brilliant uh, performance. Wow. And uh, it's continuing through June 4th. Oh, great. So we've got mm. some time, then. We can check right. it out. Exactly. Okay, now, Tyler, I have a question. Now, what is it about Cantonese opera that captured you? For one thing, it's Chinese opera. <laughs> oh, it's Chinese opera. Yeah. Oh, there's thank our you. first thank correction you. Yeah, right there. Thank you very much. And what, what, uh, what got me into Yeah, like, what, what about it? You know, for me, it was basketball. I love to be physical. Now, what about Cantonese opera? Is it the beauty of it? I mean, what, what about it interests you? Is that, like... It's like you're singing, right? Like say back then when you were a kid, you used to always like to sing stuff like Luther Vandross, Usher, and stuff like that. But instead, um, you could you could uh, sing a song that you don't even know the language to. You you might know a little bit of it, but you could do, actually sing it. Right. Now, now, do your friends come and see you? What do they think? Uh, well, they never get the chance to see me. But if I'm on TV, they get to they get to see it. That's uh, right. This guy's getting a lot of media. A lot yeah, of media. Definitely. I saw a lot of interesting blips out there. Now, what, uh, you don't have to, but like say a verse of what it would sound like. Because myself and a lot of viewers out there might, might not know what that sound sounds like out of a nine year old boy. Well, I guess I could do a verse. Meditate <laughs> That, that was very soulful, wow. actually. That, yeah, that was. was beautiful. Thank you for doing that. Now, what'd you say? Mm, thanks. 
No, what did you say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said, what, what do you what He's do like, I thank say? you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it? Well, it might be kind of complex. Yeah. It sounded it sounded very complex when he was singing it. I can't imagine yeah. wrapping that up that quickly. But but thank you for doing that. Yeah. So you've been doing this for a while. Is this something you want to do for the rest of your life? I mean, is this your passion and you really want to stick stick it out? I really do. But um, I've been talking to my dad a lot, and his voice is really really deep. So Ooh. oh yeah, that puberty think, thing, right? I don't think <laughs> I don't think I might be able to hit that high note anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, you seem like a very multi-talented fellow, and I'm sure there's a lot of other local youth like yourself that may have that interest or talent. Brad, I think now there are some programs that you do that reach out to K youth. through 12 right. high school uh -huh. teachers. That is that's huge for educating local youth on Absolutely. performing arts. Absolutely, we have uh, we do two uh, original live performances that are slated for different uh, age groups. In fact, we just did one for a senior group. Uh, oh. this morning and it's uh, for us I mean the most important thing to talk about the performing arts is you've got to see the performing right, arts right. rather than just you know look at books about it right. Right. so that's why it's so important for us to have people like Tyler you know there and performing so you see the art embodied and we do yeah, these shows for groups for sure. you know of all ages and then they understand what the books and the and the archives are about that's what we're collecting is it's, it's a living history and it's going on right now I like that. I mean, just to get started for people that don't know too much about the San Francisco Performing Arts Library and Museum, just going to sfpalm.org, breadth of knowledge. I mean, I saw a little bit about you. I saw a little bit about the programs. I right. saw a little bit about the exhibits. A lot, I mean, a lot of information to get started on. And I mean, I know myself, I will probably be checking it out a little bit Me more too. than I, I would have otherwise. It's a treasure trove. Right, yeah. because a lot of people go to the MoMA and they don't realize there's, I mean, myself, I'm, I'm really into multicultural parts of performing mm -hmm. arts. and. I think just up here, there's a good, uh, you know, range of cultures and, and experiences. So, I think it's I think it's great. Key to persuasion is identification, and I, I very much I identified know. with your website. So That's thank great. you so much for putting that out there. And I yeah. think as far as Tyler's concerned, without knowing it, he's groundbreaking. You know, you're helping other young kids that may have had interests in the same area. You know, go ahead and say, hey, I'm gonna do it. I don't care. Um, what my friends may say. I love it. I think it's beautiful. And I think that's very well, important, man. What What are your friends saying? I mean, are they like, "Wow, Tyler"? Or well, they're they're just wondering, sort of like, "Why am I doing this?" But still, I'm just saying, I I did this now, and I'm gonna do it forever. Right I'm, on. I'm I like that. Try. Yeah. yeah. I like Being a, a performer, I mean, can open up a bunch <coughs> of windows. I mean, you may be performing in a different capacity. Right. But for now, I got to say, very impressive, very impressive to... What's amazing, too, about Tyler is that he's introducing a whole generation of Chinese Americans to their own culture. You know, right. it was uncool for right. a while, I think, for a lot of Chinese Americans to embrace the past. They thought it was mm -hmm. old hat. And now, seeing someone who's not from that culture embodying it so beautifully and, you know, truly... I think they're co coming to an understanding of their yeah. own culture that they didn't have before. Right. And that's the future. Yeah, I think uh, when you were talking about the history of Cantonese opera goes back thousands and thousands of years. What I found very interesting was anybody and everybody identified with this kind of opera. It wasn't specific to any kind of, of class per se. It didn't matter if you were literate or illiterate, if you were whatever, whatever avenue of life you came from, everybody could identify and would go see this performing art. And this is the way most performing arts have been. You know, it's very recent that we've gotten to this idea that the performing arts are elite, mm -hmm. that they're, they're for some special class. <laughs> opera itself, Western opera here in right. San Francisco, used to be this thriving thing. Everybody could afford a ticket. Everybody went. It was the rock concert of its time, you know, and we've gotten away from that. But mm -hmm. that's where this stuff comes from. It was all popular. Right. Well, it's great to have someone like Tyler to kind of, again, bring us back. Bring us back to that know that performing arts is for everybody. Any I'm age. a young person. Right. We're Absolutely. still considered all pretty young people here. It's, it's right. never too late to reach out. Um, I definitely want to say thank you to the two of you guys for joining us today. Well, thank you very much, It you was guys. Uh, very educational. As, as you said earlier, what do you know about Cantonese opera? Said, not, not too much. Well, now we know, know a little, a little bit more. more. Yeah. yeah, Absolutely. And yeah. it's also great to know we've got another place to actually physically go see these exhibits till June 4th, right? We're talking June about 4th. Vanessa McAllister, mm -hmm. www.sfpalm.org. Mm -hmm. We would love to go check that out. And Tyler, thank you so much for being and here. And thanks for the, you know, the sample there, man. Free of I, charge. Yeah, I didn't think. I Free didn't of charge. We actually got to give them about five bucks after the show. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. now uh, we're going to catch up with Charity too. She's our woman on the streets. Get some voices, opinions. This is called our Vox Pox. Check this out.
Hey, I'm Charity Twos, your woman on the street, and today we're asking people what they think of the Cantonese opera. So we're here with Ping. Ping, what do you think of the Chinese opera? Um, I think my grandmother used to like uh, Chinese opera, and uh, I don't like it too much, and because I think they people just plant, uh, plant their, their faces, and uh, for me it's more like older person's uh, stuff, and uh, younger people tend not to like it. I think you probably will be made fun of if you like it a lot, and also, I, I don't understand why they are singing because they use some kind of different accent to sing. Mm. Car, do you know anything about the Cantonese opera? No, I'm not familiar. Cantonese. What, what do you think, like what comes to mind when you hear Cantonese opera? What would you think it would be? Um, I would think it would be some kind of opera based in China, in Cantonese. Would you imagine it to be theatrical? Have you seen the the um, images of people with like painted faces and high brows and rows yeah. on the side. That's, that comes from Cantonese opera, that okay. style of makeup. Um, all I know is it sounded like... <laughs> and I was kind of like taken aback. I, I just didn't expect it to sound that way. Maybe it just wasn't my style. So uh, would you go to the opera again? Only for free. I think if they can more make it more like a, like a trend, like a fashionable, then people probably go because right now people are thinking about like when they think about the Chinese opera or Cantonese opera, they, they think about it's like old fashioned. So if they can promote it as a trend, then people probably would like to see it. I think they are kind of neat actually. If you when I think when I look back, I kind of neat, but I just don't want to see it because I don't want my friend to make fun of me. I guess. <laughs> Would you want to go to a Cantonese opera, do you think? Yeah, sure. Why not? Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. That was Charity. Now we want to thank everyone for joining us with Talk Back. Today we talked um, about Cantonese opera, had some guests. Did you learn anything? I learned a lot. You know, obviously, right off the bat, I was wowed by a nine-year-old who could sing better than I could ever, if in, even if I had classes. Brad Rosenstein from the San Francisco Performing Arts Library and Museum, right such on. a mouthful, was also wow. here, sfpalm.org. That's it. A new great website. I'm going to bookmark there so I can check it out a little bit more. And Charity, got to love Charity. That woman just... She's out there. She we gets gotta what bring I her in hear. the set so you guys can meet her officially. Um, I think with the Cantonese opera, the thing I loved most um, was in the package, just learning about the costumes and the singing and the dance, everything that came with it, not just the singing aspect. The actual yeah, singing. Yeah. yeah, you realize kind of that whole feeling it gives you when you go into a theater and you see someone performing and it was nice for us to see that firsthand with Tyler and to know that locally, I mean, Van Ness and McAllister, here we have a great library yeah, and museum, definitely. you know, right by the MoMA where we can check this out. So, yeah, it was really fun for me and it's, you know, it's encouraging. It's encouraging to see youth doing something definitely. different, you know what different, I mean? And being able to reach out. Yeah. So I really did like that very well, much. Well, I so. thought you were going to actually sing for us a little bit. No, I was oh, trying no, to get no, Tyler to no, teach no, no. her a little bit. Don't, but. don't do that. That's the people don't want to see that. But uh, yeah, I had a really good time and I can't wait to see you know, what our viewers are gonna think. So definitely check out www.talkbackcentral.com. We wanna hear your ideas, please. You are us, you are our voices. So reach out to us, shoot us an email, give us a call. Anything. Anthony is waiting by the phone right uh, now. Yeah, I know right. your phone's not ringing, I know. Okay, <laughs> so once again, thank you guys and make sure you guys make it back to Talk Back. Yes, Peace. boss. <laughs>